Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss? Where today I'll be covering some recent Star Trek news from the New York Comic Con 2021 that includes breaking down the final trailer for the upcoming fourth season of Star Trek Discovery. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I've been doing breakdowns of most of the trailers for the upcoming seasons of Star Trek, but I realize that I've yet to do one for the upcoming season of Discovery. So I'll be going over things that were released in the prior trailers, along with some of my theories about what could be happening this season, and going over some other news that has been released. I also want to share some news about the new animated Star Trek series Prodigy, as a new clip was released, as well as four reoccurring cast members were just announced today. Before I get into that, I would like to welcome you to WDIM and ask that you please hit that like button to help support the channel. I will be covering every episode of Star Trek Discovery once it debuts on November 18th, and I will also be covering the animated series Prodigy upon its debut on October 28th, so make sure that you are subscribed for all the latest Star Trek news and breakdowns. The third season of Star Trek Discovery changed the landscape of the series dramatically by throwing the crew almost a thousand years forward and into a new universe that had been forever changed by something called the Burn. While most people assumed that this event was an act of malice, instead it turned out to be more of a geological disaster that has since been solved by Michael Burnham and the crew of the Discovery. This season reportedly picks up shortly after the events of the third season finale, with the Federation rebuilding and regaining more of its members along with some new ones. Since the Federation is now aware of the Dilithium planet that was found during the third season, they are able to provide humanitarian aid to more of the galaxy, and it appears that this will be the main focus of Starfleet once we meet our crew again. There are a few unresolved plot lines from the third season that we are said to get answers for this season, with the most obvious being the status of the character Grey and how they are seen by Adira and the rest of the crew. Dr. Kolber is not only the doctor on the ship, but also the ship's counselor, and now a surrogate parent to Adira and also Grey to an extent. I'm sure that once Grey is brought back into the world, which I believe will be early on in the season, Dr. Kolber along with his partner Stamets will take a large role in Grey's life and help them reacclimate to the world around them. There also seemed to be some animosity between Stamets and Burnham at the end of the third season due to Burnham's decision to remove Stamets from harm's way during the climactic final battle. But recent reports indicate that while Stamets may not be happy still about her decision, that as professionals they will be able to work and live together. There's also the inclusion of the Cleveland Booker character and the fact that we learned that he and his people are able to operate the Spore Drive, which was believed to be something only Stamets could do. This should open up a lot of opportunities for Book to be involved in the series, but also for his people to help Starfleet spread the use of the technology. Finally, there's also the status of Saru and his place on the Discovery. Not only is he no longer the captain of the ship, as that position was given to Michael Burnham at the end of last season, but he was sent to his home planet with Sukal, the Kelpian responsible for the Burn event, in an effort to reconnect with his people. In the newest trailer, which I will get to in a second, we do see him once again on the bridge, so it is apparent that he finds his way back to the Discovery, but it will be interesting to see what brought him back. Sylvia Tilly was promoted to acting first officer at the end of the third season, along with Burnham's promotion to captain, so learning Saru's new position on the bridge will be a curious plot point as well. In the past few months, the trailers that have been released allude to an unseen threat that the galaxy is facing. Before this trailer, it was not easy to make out a lot of what was going on, probably because the production crews were still working on the visual effects. But this trailer gives us our best look yet, as it begins with the Discovery entering an area of space with what looks like a good amount of debris. This almost mirrors how the Discovery was brought into this timeline last season, as they arrived in a pocket of debris left over from the burn event when they traveled from their known century. It also looks like Burnham is in one of the pods that we have seen before on the series, but she is not wearing any kind of protective suit besides the standard away mission outfit. So this makes me think that this scene may take place on a planet she has traveled to and this is not her on the Discovery. We also get a few quick shots of Burnham in bed with Book, which I think is very important to the answer of what is going on and I will get back into that later in the breakdown. Burnham wakes up on a medical bed with Dr. Kolber, Book, and Grudge the cat surrounding her. It doesn't look like Book is wearing a Starfleet uniform yet, so if he does join the crew, he may just be the Discovery's cultural attaché, similar to the role Neelix had on the USS Voyager. If this were true, it would also be kind of ironic that he has a cat, since a lot of people have compared the design of Neelix to the furry animal. Burnham then addresses the bridge crew about the new threat and how they will fight it. We then see what must be Federation headquarters, as well as the president of the Federation, a new character named Rylak, who is part human, Cardassian, and Bajoran. We also see a few other familiar races of aliens, such as an Orion ambassador and a Ferengi officer. It is nice to see a Ferengi in a Starfleet uniform, and this feels like another homage to the character Nog after a ship that bears his name was shown last season as well. Saru is also there in uniform, which leads credence to my theory that he will rejoin the crew quickly after the season begins. If you freeze a shot around the 45 second mark, 
you can see what looks like a simulation of the anomaly they are discussing. It appears to destroy a planetoid and looks like a ripple through space. We can also tell by the dialogue that the President of the Federation is not as impressed with Burnham as Admiral Vance was, as he was the one who promoted her after being won over last season. Burnham seems to work best when she has something to prove, so this will probably do good for her character. We also get a shot of Tignataro as Jet Reno, who is lucky to be able to be featured this season after she was unable to participate in most of the filming due to COVID restrictions. All of her scenes were filmed without any of the other actors, so it will be intriguing to see what type of arc her character is on this season. We see a lot of quick shots as Burnham describes their mission, which includes some characters that look like they are from the Kawat Malat, an order of warrior nuns that Burnham's mother belongs to, as well as the character Elnor from Star Trek Picard. There's also a really interesting shot of Saru in a chamber, and it looks like he is manipulating some type of virtual reality mapping system. I think this may be on his planet Kaminar, as the writing on the floor looks to me like it is similar to the writing of the Ba'ul that we have seen in prior seasons. This makes me think that at one point, the Kelpians and Ba'ul may have learned to coexist and share technology. If this was happening on their planet, it may explain why we did not see any Kelpians during the original run of Star Trek shows until Discovery, since both species would be more focused on bringing their world together instead of searching out for new ones as a member of the Federation. We also see Adira out on a mission in a snow-covered landscape, and I hope that this season has some of the same location shooting that the third did because some of those settings were absolutely gorgeous. Another quick shot shows Books struggling to work the spore drive, so there may be a learning curve there for the character to work through. Then we get a shot of Grey in a white medical gown and crying. Given that when Grey was seen last season, they were wearing the same clothes that they had on when they died, I believe this confirms that Dr. Kolber finds a way to bring them back. There is also a quick shot of the Kovic character, played by David Cronenberg, which could be a hint that time travel may once again play a role this season, as he seemed to be very interested and knowledgeable in the subject last season. Towards the end of the trailer, we also see a Federation flag being handed to the President of Navarre, signifying that they have decided to rejoin the Federation, something that was hinted at last season. The synopsis for the fourth season states that this is a threat that the crew of the Discovery have never faced before, but this anomaly may be something that Star Trek fans have seen before. I think that this season, we may once again see an extra-dimensional realm known as the Nexus, which was introduced in the movie Star Trek Generations. Within the Nexus, time and space did not exist, and it is possible to live out your fondest memories or even see possible other timelines. Captain Kirk was trapped in the Nexus and was presumed dead, until with the knowledge of Guinan, Captain Picard was able to find Captain Kirk and help him stop Soren, a man who was destroying planets in order to find a way into the Nexus. First of all, the anomaly is said to be a gravimetric disturbance, which is exactly what the Nexus was referred to by the Enterprise-B in that movie, and in the trailer for the upcoming season of Discovery, you can see the loss of gravity in many scenes. In that movie, the Nexus also caused catastrophic damage to any ships in its path, and in the trailer, Book states that the disturbance did the same to a ship he was aware of. The ripple effect that we see in the simulation also resembles the ribbon-like effect that was used to create the Nexus in that movie, and it also destroys planets and stars in its path. But what really makes me think that this is a version of the Nexus is that in the trailer, among all the shots of damage and calamity, we also see some calm shots of Burnham and Book together away from the crew. These shots really seem out of place with everything else going on, and living in the Nexus would allow for people to live out whatever kind of lives they wanted to live. After all the strife in her life, it would be understandable if Burnham just wanted to stop and rest, and this vision may be her living her life with Book in the Nexus. But let me know what you think in the comments. Could this season be a return to the Nexus? I also want to touch on this story that was literally released as I was writing the script, which is the announcement of four new reoccurring cast members to the upcoming first season of Star Trek Prodigy. The first new cast member actually revealed his inclusion accidentally a few months ago, and that is that Robert Beltran will be returning to voice the character Takote, who is now a captain. Joining him will be Jamela Jamil as a Trill Ensign named Asensia, as well as David Diggs, who will be playing an Andorian commander named Tysis, and Jason Alexander, who will be playing a Talrite doctor named Nam. First off, I love that Jason Alexander is also returning to Star Trek, after he guest starred on the Voyager episode Think Tank, and that he will be voicing a Tellarite character. I wonder if there are any characters that Mr. Alexander has played before that are as argumentative and contemptuous as Tellarites are known to be. I would not be surprised that once the USS Protostar is found, and the Janeway program is activated, that Captain Chakotay and this crew will be tasked with finding them. Given the fact that Chakotay spent so much time in the Delta Quadrant, I am sure that he is Starfleet's expert on the area, given that we know that the actual Janeway is an Admiral, Seven of Nine is a part of the Fenris Rangers, Tom Paris is now a celebrity, and Harry Kim is no doubt still an Ensign. 
but let me know what you think. Does the addition of these new co-stars get you any more excited for this new show? Well, that is all I have today, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?